Hey, all my Aries friends, welcome to my YouTube channel and your April 2024 monthly horoscope. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. And today we're going to cover probably the most powerful month of 2024. But before I start, I just want to do a little bit of business. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about a house, I'm talking about it based on Aries rising. If you don't know your rising sign, you may want to go to one of the free birth calculators on the internet. You just need your exact time of birth and location in order to determine that information. Also, if you are an Aries moon, this uh, video is applicable to you as well as Aries sun. And if you have three or more personal planets, personal planets are the sun, the moon, Venus, Mars, Mercury, Saturn, even Jupiter within the sign of Aries, this video is applicable to you. Um, if you are more advanced in astrology and you know the house systems, and you are a late degree Aries rising, that's anywhere from say 20 degrees of Aries to 29 degrees of Aries rising. You may want to look at this in the Placidus house system as this will make your first house primarily Taurus. And Taurus would be an important uh, video for you to watch as well. But if you are just a regular person who just watches astrology, you know, a little bit and has a little bit of knowledge. This video is applicable for you if you are an Aries rising moon or sun. So, oh, and we are also that when I talk about times and dates, this is based on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. What I've done here is just put up a quick slide because we have some powerful aspects. The month starts off with Mercury going retrograde in the sign of Aries. This is your first house. Aries rules the self, your identity, your self-awareness, your assertiveness. It is energetic, impulsive, commanding, courageous, a little brash sometimes. Aries is often called the warrior, but is also the hero. The hero. Uh, it is uh, represents firemen and people who are able to go into situations that are unstable and act out of gut and instinct. So this is really going to be powerful because Mercury rules the mind. It rules what we think, what we speak, and what we, how we interact in our everyday lives. A retrograde in the sign of Aries is going to give you an opportunity to look at how you are asserting yourself, how you are speaking, not only to others, but to yourself. We also are going to have uh, the second in our eclipse season, the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. This is a very, very powerful time as we have the North Node uh, on in your first house, the North Node is a point that we are stretching for in this lifetime, an experience, a dynamic, something we are not used to, but we we have a soul's intention to, to put attention in that area. So with the North Node being in the sign of Aries, this is about discovering yourself, reframing yourself, reframing your viewpoint and having it be aligned to a deeper truth of yourself. We also are going to see the great conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus during the month of April. We have been feeling this conjunction growing as Jupiter has moved closer and closer to the planet of liberation and of rebellion, and Jupiter rules expansion. So you're going to hear a lot of astrologers talking about this conjunction. The last time these two planets met was in 2010, 2011, in the sign of Pisces, which is extremely different energy than the sign of Taurus. But at the same time, both of these two signs rule a sense of history. Uh, Taurus ruling my personal history, the history of I've, I've experienced with my family as I was growing up in my life and how I determined myself as a result of that. And Pisces rules a soul's history, a habitual way of thinking and feeling that you may not be aware of on the surface, but lies underneath um, your actions and your belief in yourself. So let me stop sharing. Oh, and I don't want to stop sharing. I just want to uh, let me minimize this and get to our 
our um, first day of April. Here we see that the planets are clustered in the sign of Pisces, the sign of Aries, and the sign of Taurus. Now, this chart, as you see it on this day at this time, is indicating a Leo rising. This, hap this is all happening in your first house, Aries. Pisces is your 12th house, and Taurus is your second house. So you are starting to see the sun traveling through your first house. And if it is your birthday, happy birthday to you. Um, but Mercury has started to go retrograde. And as Mercury retrogrades, it's going to go back over and meet with these points here. Mercury is going to retrograde from 27 degrees of Aries all the way back to 15 degrees of Aries. So there's going to be a lot of um, thoughts, a lot of conversation about uh, potential wounds of the self, how you want to rewrite and reframe yourself, your intention to do that. And I think it will also bring up uh, potentially siblings uh, potentially cousins, your childhood experiences, how how that um, is a basis for much of your thought process and how you take action and how connected you actually feel to others um, and if they see the truth of who and what you are but as you perceive yourself. I think this is very powerful. Um, when we, when we um, see Mercury now, I'm going to click on the sign of Mercury and what we're going to see is Mercury is making a square to Pluto as it has entered the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is your 11th house. The 11th house represents your friends, your network, the world wide web. It represents innovation, the future, space, science, the stars. It also represents your hopes and your dreams. So here, what we see is a tense aspect of thought, sort of going back over this this sense of self and any wounds attached to the sense of self, to how you see yourself versus how others may perceive you or see you. So this is going to be a sort of fork in the road within your mind. It could dredge up an old psychological imprint. Pluto rules toxic waste. It rules control and power that others have over us. Oftentimes that uh, comes from our childhood and how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive how others perceive us. It's a lot of perceiving going on there, but it's powerful. Um, we see, um, let me just quickly look at my notes. On the fifth, before I move on to the fifth, I want to note that this Jupiter uh, Uranus conjunction, because Uranus rules the sign of Aquarius, which means it is the boss of the house here. And while Pluto is not making any aspects to this at this point, Uranus and Jupiter, there is an expansion of, of the belief system here, an opportunity to expand how you perceive yourself, how you perceive your ability to make your own money, how you liberate yourself from any chains that may be holding you back based on a, an older, more historic perception of you. I'm an Aries rising, and I can tell you that a lot of people have called me hostile, assertive, angry. You know, I've gotten a lot of the, the more challenging dynamics of Aries as I was younger, but as I've aged, those have become much more fine-tuned and honed. And there's an awareness that I have that I didn't have before about how I land on other people. So this is another thing that the Mercury retrograde will bring up is how you land on other people and how you yourself have transformed and whether or not you're going to base your sense of self on what other people see. Do they see your transformation? They may not. That's what this square may be because Pluto is going to bring up energies that have been dominating you from a darker side so that it can be transformed into the phoenix rising. And that's what this second house for you ruling your childhood, your skills, your voice, your ability to make money. It also rules food. Um, and, it, and while this 
you know, when you're looking at this chart again, I want to emphasize that I I can't change, I can't make this Aries rising on any given day. I have to just use the wheel as it is. So we're talking Aries, that's your first house. Pisces is your 12th house. And here is Taurus, your second house. Let's move on to Venus moving into Aries. She's been in Pisces here having a lot of conversations about using her skills in a more structured way and using her talents. When we see Venus in Pisces, she is in what's called exaltation. She is not only a welcomed guest, she is an honored guest, a, a respected guest. Her voice is very um, lyrical and whimsical here in the sign of Pisces, and she's very dreamy. But here, as she had a conversation with Saturn, she was wanting to put structure into her creativity. And this is where as she moves into Aries, the waters are going to get a little bit more challenging because Aries is very assertive and Venus rules the sign of partnership. So she's considered here in detriment. And that detriment would be foreign territory where she's unfamiliar and asserting herself in a way that is not worrying about other people can make her feel very uh, exiled from the group. But this is a necessary energy for her to experience as she starts to assert her dreams. So let's go on to looking at the 5th of April. Here we go. All right, so here she is at zero degrees. And I think this is important because the zero degree is the world access. It's where, you know, she's sitting at the, what would be the beginning of the soul's journey, zero degrees of Aries. And ha and as it's going to move through the, the wheel, Venus is going to experience herself in, in different colors and hues and different environments. So this first environment is about how she asserts herself, her own wants, her own desires, her own heroic energy, her own courage. And as she moves towards the North Node, she's going to feel this pull to go back to cooperation or potentially even um, a push-pull between or a greater awareness between what she wants and how that may differ from the cooperative relationships she has nurtured within her life. So this is very powerful because Libra is your natural seventh house of marriage partnership, also of um, professional partnerships. It's where, you know, you could be potentially an attorney and you have, you work within a law firm with other attorneys, a contractual relationship. That's just using the most mundane of examples. It could be many, many things here. So I think that's important to pay attention to. Venus going into Aries, while it may feel, um, I also want to offer this for those that are Aries rising and with the Mercury retrograde happening where Venus and Mercury will come together at some point. I think this is actually uh, a little later in the month, but I want to bring this up because your awareness of your self-esteem and your awareness of your conversation could be very transformational right now. It can really turn what was, you know, considered the manure in your life into the garden that grows from that manure. So I think that's very powerful and um, something to keep within your awareness. All right, let's move on to the new moon solar eclipse, which is going to be the second eclipse we have. This is on the 8th and it is at 11.24 a.m. Pacific time. Now we see this, um, this eclipse. Um, I think we had a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra back in March on the 25th, bringing some awareness to the relationship we have with ourselves. Now, Aries, here's the opportunity to plant the seeds for new growth. This is at the, um, the Libra degree. 19th degree is, is that more mastered energy of Libra. And when I say that, I think it's very important because 
When Libra is in a marriage partnership or a love relationship, she defaults in many ways to the relationship because she doesn't want to create waves or be um, disruptive. But now she's learning that sometimes love is disruptive because it, when we awaken to the needs of the self, we contribute more uh, powerfully to the relationship itself. So not only do we see ourselves planting the seeds of this new moon in the darkest phase of the moon where faith is required, we also see that this new moon is conjunct Chiron. Chiron is the wound that is transformed into a gift as we age and we extract wisdom from any wounds. So now I feel this very powerful energy of Aries saying, you know what, I'm really aware of myself and I don't want to dull my sword. Rather, I want to sharpen the sword, the sword that is my mind, the sword that is my speech, the sword that is what I have learned about myself moving forward in this life's journey. And now I'm representing a sense of myself that is strategic. It's not dumbing down your power, but rather not being impulsive um, with your power. So this 24 degree uh, Mercury retrograde at the same time as we're planting these seeds uh, for this new sense of self feels very, very powerful to me. It feels like there's this growing awareness. And here we are really seeing a lot of planets in the house of self and the house of self-esteem, the house of security. Um, we also see a conjunction here at the same time as this new moon between Saturn Saturn rules our history and Mars, which rules you. <laughs> this is your ruling planet. Now it's in this house of, of spirituality, of a sense of my soul rather than my personality or my human structure known as my body, my mind. Because while these two planets are making an, a quincunx, a tense aspect, a blind spot to the south node, it tells me that as these two have a conversation, they are willing to go into their soul's history, Saturn, in a way that represents my bravery, my, my willingness not to villainize where I have been, but to be brave and to see how it works for me. This combination of Saturn and Mars is very powerful because Mars is exalted in the sign of Capricorn, which Saturn rules. So while one may say, oh, Saturn slows things down and Mars wants to speed things up, here we're finding them being cooperative on a spiritual mission where our history is giving us the foundation for our brave movement. And at the same time, creating an opportunity for us to plant the seeds for more balance within our relationships, uh, more ease within our own self-assertion, while it may feel uncomfortable uh, to where we have traditionally been in relationships, been a peacemaker, a cooperative component, component, a harmonious dynamic, even if it was to our own detriment, which is why Venus, the ruling planet of, of Libra and the South Node right now is in a challenge in this sign that is the furthest away from her home. Although she will be back home here in Taurus at the end of the month. But right now she's practicing self-assertion in a way that allows her to rewrite the story she tells about herself from her childhood. Or in the case, maybe I shouldn't use gender pronouns, but they just come out that way because she represents the feminine. All right. So this new moon is super powerful. It is a six month influence. So the seeds that are planted here uh, could really show up uh, much later in the year. I also want to point out that Jupiter is at the 19th degree at this time. So we've got these energies really powerfully calling forth an opportunity to create balance, to extract wisdom from a disruption or something that has felt uncomfortable, which will ultimately liberate us from where we have been and allow us to move forward uh, with the future and our dreams more clearly with less 
um, noise in our ears from other people's voices. All right, let's go now to the 11th. Let me move this to 12 p.m. And we're going to see the sun and Mercury conjunct at 22 degrees. This is very powerful for me because the 22nd degree is the Capricorn degree. So I'm really sort of, again, reviewing how I assert myself as an Aries. How do I, all of this is happening in your first house of self. So this is really, there. it is all about you, April. Okay, Aries. And this is not about looking back at your childhood to find the, the potholes or the pitfalls. This is about a, a rear view mirror uh, type of reference so that you can take that windshield and drive your your car, your sports car, your, you know, your tour bus forward in a way that's much more aligned to your future and what you want to express. So here, thoughts of new structure, thoughts of potentially even literally putting some kind of structure into your daily activities that supports what could potentially happen during this conjunction, which is going to take place exact later in the month when Mercury is I think it happens on the same day that Mercury goes direct. But this influence, you know, to me, they might as well be exact right now. I don't need them to be exact to have them be very powerful. We are feeling the expansion, the potential wealth, the shifting of my beliefs. That You could even have graduated and get your PhD or some sort of uh, schooling that you were endeavoring. That could very easily happen. But also what can happen is Jupiter rules business. And Aries is a natural entrepreneur. So you could find yourself starting to feel some real traction, even with a Mercury retrograde, in expanding your business, in broadening yourself on the internet, uh, which is the future of commerce, no doubt. We see that this, this conjunction is in the house of money, in your second house of money. So there's a real opportunity for unexpected resources, unexpected opportunities for expansion. And I do think that the conversations that Mars, your ruling planet, and Saturn, who hosts Mars when it is in his home, here we're having, I, I see the Knights Templars, I see spiritual warriors, I see peaceful warriors here, really being much more aware of a bigger picture while not being able to see that picture with their eyes. Okay, let's go on to, let's go on to the 18th. Okay, on the 18th, we see Mer Mercury is still retrograde at 17 degrees, but now having a conversation with Venus. And this conversation is in an almost exact opposition to this South Node. Now, I want to reiterate that the South Node is a habitual point of, of habit, thought. It's like a soul's imprint. And here in the sign of Libra, it would be very much to defer the self for partnership, to, to acquiesce my power for a greater good here. So this opposition, and we see the North Node here, is saying, wait a minute, let me rethink if this was really a powerful move that was bringing in balance, or was this somehow you know, a point of erosion and loss because I did not bring myself into my relationships. So here, this is a really important a dynamic for re-evaluating and reframing your wants and desires yourself in relation again to not only your childhood experience, but your self-talk. I personally, Terry, am very tuned into words like I need to do this and I have to do that and I should do this. Those words are very challenging because they create a dense vibration. When I say I get to do something or, you know, I have an opportunity here, even if the opportunity is to push a little bit of a rock uphill, we see that being a much lighter vibration. So I think that this is going to be very powerful because again, now we're seeing Aries, we have, we're started, this exact conjunction has started between 
uh, Jupiter and Uranus. And as they have this summit, they're talking about expansive things. They're talking about moving the story forward in a way that does not is not anchored in the past. There's almost an understanding now between these two energies that I cannot keep my foot in the smallness of where I've come from because you can't have one foot in the past and move your story forward. We also see that the sun is about to enter into Taurus uh, any minute now. Uh, so we'll, we'll address that. Uh, what else is going on? All right, that's that for the day. For that day on the 19th the next day we see the sun has entered the taurus energy and in no short time we'll meet with these two planets as well which will be very very bright and very powerful expanding the sense of ego the sense of self i didn't quite mention this but i'm going to kind of in retrospect when the sun is in aries it is considered exalted the sun rules the sign of Leo, but when it is in Aries, it is a welcome guest. It is a revered uh, energy. It is one that is celebrated parades and good China come out. So you've had some very powerful energies supporting you as we move into this Taurus energy, this Taurus season. We see now that Venus and Mercury have swapped places. Uh, Mercury is still retrograde. It's going to retrograde all the way back to the North Node, where it will become conjunct before it moves forward on the 25th. So it's starting to slow down a little bit. Venus is booking her way towards Chiron. And here she's really, again, having an opportunity to say, will the wound, will the wound anchor me and tether me to an old story? Or now do I get to transform it into the gift? the wisdom, the, the power of knowing the ebb and the flow of life, that sometimes the dark spots make the color pop. Maybe it's not sometimes, maybe it's all the time. So this is very, very powerful energy. This whole month, I can't begin to say how powerful the energy is. Um, and I, I think we're all going to be feeling it in different ways. We do see an interesting dynamic here where even though this is just momentary because the moon moves very quickly, the moon is in an opposition here to Saturn. So we could on this particular day also feel an, a sense of, you know, um, you know, Virgo rules employment and work, modern day slavery, where we sell our time for money to pay our bills. And Saturn is, is, you know, rules structure and government and and leadership and you know things such as that building and agriculture so this opposition right now may a little bit be about you know have i have i uh, unleashed myself from the things that i think i'm obligated to or i'm or i'm dutiful to and allowed myself to put structure and some some foundation into my dreams, into my hopes, into the things I muse about. I think of Pisces as that girl in her bedroom with her hairbrush singing in the mirror to her favorite pop songs, dreaming of being a star someday. And if indeed that's true, then Saturn is going to want you to put some effort into that endeavor to be not just dreaming it, but also learning the skills that it needs to build that dream into the re into reality. And part of that skill is being aware of your mind and how your mind triggers you either into your future in a joyous way or tethers you to your past in a way that it can be potentially resentful. So that's important. Okay, on the 23rd, we are going to see, oh, one more thing I want to say before I leave this day. We see the sun making a, a square to Pluto. This is, um, again, a very sort of a quick energy. The sun moves very quickly, but we're, we're really looking at the 11th house for Aries here. We're looking at the second house of of self-worth Aries um, Aquarius being the house of hopes and dreams how I assert myself out into the world uh, how I the permissions I give myself to dream this is really a, a, a point where you may feel your old the old story coming up 
you know, oh, I, you know, I'm not likable or I'm too harsh. I'm too brash. I'm too brooding and intense. And Pluto is saying, I don't know, be your individual self, be the unique energy that you are. And if you build, build it, the tribe that will bo most benefit from your talents and your efforts will appear. They will be drawn to you. So, all right, let's go on to the 23rd where we see a full moon in Scorpio. Now that is at 448 Pacific time. Now uh, the sun and the moon are always in an opposition during a full moon. And this is where we see the sun's light reflected off of the surface of the moon, creating the brightest phase of the moon. And this is really powerful because we see it making a T-square. T meaning triangle. I used to think T square was supposed to be like a cross, but it isn't. Uh, so here we see the opposition between the sun and the moon at the fourth degree. And then they're both making a square to this focal point here uh, being Pluto. So uh, the moon is in your eighth house of transformation. It's also in the house that you co-rule because Mars ruled Scorpio for eons before Pluto was discovered. It's also in the house of power and control, the power that people have over us through money, sex, um, prestige, in any way. So here there's going to be some sort of illumination, and that illumination will be quite transformational because it's going to bring up something that was tethering you uh, either to feeling powerless or maybe even inadvertently asserting power over situations that you really don't care about, but you know how to control them. That might come up because, again, we we see this um, conjunction is still going on. My belief system is being expanded. My opportunities to liberate myself from any feelings of being um, not connected, exiled in some way. We also see Mercury is still retrograding uh, and it is very much in its shadow period before it's about to go direct in a few days and hovering over this very karmic nodal structure. This is the emotional no nodal structure that basically dictates our moon's uh, historic life. That's what I, I want, how I want to put it. So this is going to be very... Um, you know, when I say illuminating, this doesn't feel as if it's illuminating something on the outside. It feels as if it's illuminating something on the inside. And it may be that, you know, part of what you've been living through, Aries, is actually as you've been sharpening the sword that is your your hero's, you know, Excalibur, your tool, you've also become a version of yourself that you don't, you haven't experienced yet. And that might be a, a very interesting illumination. So while you see something in your head, oh, this is how I always react. Now I'm taking action. And the T-square may be that tense uh, dynamic of seeing the polarity of what you're capable of. That's the way I want to put it. You know, either great uh, heroic feats or great destruction, frankly. So. All right, let's go on to Mercury. We'll go direct on the 25th. See if we got Mercury direct. Okay. Now, as Mercury goes direct, we see it's it's hovering over. Now the nodes have gone retrograde. The nodes do this all the time. Uh, they tend to hover in certain points. The reason I think this is significant is because the 15th degree is the Gemini degree. And we see the ruler of Gemini, Mercury, here, at, you know, conjunct this point that I haven't experienced, this point of myself in balance, this point of myself aware of my thoughts, this point of myself being the, the hero in my own life. Uh, and then I see this opposition to the south node. And I'm aware of how to be cooperative with others, but this time I'm aware of how to be cooperative while putting myself in the equation. And here we see the, this is where everyone's been talking about is this 22nd degree grand conjunction because it's at the, the Capricorn degree. So Capricorn represents 
old school, old authority, old traditional structures, government, uh, trickle down things, you know? So here's something big is going to happen on a world stage, probably has to do with money. We've got the planet of money in the house of money uh, with the house of liberation. So there's something, you know, and this is going to go on for a while. So uh, don't be surprised by, by anything that kind of expect the unexpected is a very good way to say that. Because this, this is going to last for months, I think. The effects of it, years potentially. Um, and our intention, our awareness of being able to put our mind in the direction that we want to experience, not necessarily what we have experienced, is going to be the game changer for those that experience more challenge or those that experience more benefit. Let's go to... Mars now on the 28th is about to enter its domicile, but before it does, it's going to have a conversation with Neptune. Here we see it exact. Now, I think this is very powerful because Neptune will be moving into Aries for a very long stay. I don't know. I don't have the dates with me, but it's in no short, you know, it's like about a year or so away. So this is a, I want to play to the spiritual aspect of Neptune. I want to play to the creative side of Neptune to the side of Neptune that sees things more idealistically. But here we see Mars bringing in a brave point to that, that idealism. It's like, you know, it almost feels as if the law of attraction and the divine laws of the universe has started to take hold here, very much influenced by Saturn's conversation with Mars throughout the month and with the restructuring of my beliefs. I really believe the Aquarian age is not one that is happening as a result of a period of time, but rather a period of consciousness, a period of awareness. And as we become aware that the more we fret about something, the more we focus on the dark side of a situation, the more we actually participate in the experience of that. Whereas if we can you know, shift our focus, we can manifest a, a completely opposite experience than the masses. That would be Uranus, the masses experience. So I think this is super, super powerful for our awareness of our evolution, our awareness of our um, divine manifester within. That's the way I want to put it. Okay, now on the 29th, the next day, we see Venus moving into her rulership. And here, I really feel as if she's going to start to apply her skills. There's been some conversations going on with Venus and Mars uh, earlier in the year. And now, while they are no longer having a, a conversation, Venus has ready to take her show on the road. She's ready to do her tour. So I'm excited for this energy. She's back home where she feels uh, super comfortable and she's she's aware of this conjunction and she's excited about it because she wants to expand her own business using her skills and she's ready to implement her belief system or at least start to exercise her belief system more uh, intentionally. That's the way I want to put it. And joining the uh, the rulership party is Mars the next day going into its rulership of Aries. So I think this is, while well, these two, normally we wouldn't be talking about them because they're not aspecting each other. They are aspecting the whole experience. So here I'm feeling brave about my own creativity, about my own sense of self and spirituality, the inner, the conversation with my inner knowing. Okay. And that conversation tells me that there is a wisdom when I experience something I'm not expecting or when I'm experiencing something that is putting me in an instinctual way, because that instinct now is shifting from a more angry instinct to a more intentional, aware, evolved, uh, conscious instinct of the bigger picture of what I want to experience. So this is exciting. Mars is going to spend some time here in rulership, enjoying the conversations that it has as, as it stretches itself for new experiences. And, uh, 
and it will reach over with Chiron. But here, I think when, when it finally does, this is later in, in May, we're going to feel a transformational energy going on here. So um, this is pretty much how the month ends. It is, again, a very powerful month for uh, setting intentions to be aware to stretch for the divine, the meaning and the wisdom in any divine disruptions. When Uranus is involved, there's you cannot really predict anything. You can try looking around in your world and saying, you know, where will something happen? But you really can't. And for those of you that want to meet a mate, you know, here, you know, Taurus, with Venus and Taurus, you could meet somebody out of nowhere on the internet or just, you know, flying a, across the country or across the world and end up just surprised as I'll get up that, you know, wow, one day I was single and the next day uh, I, I had met the person of my dreams. And that's just one crazy example. All right, Aries, that's it for April 2024. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book an astrology reading with me or an angel reading, I am available. My information is below in the description. Please just reach out and I'll email you all the information and rates. And please like, please share, please subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next month. Have a great April. Bye-bye.